What's up everybody, in today's video you are going to learn an open source course plan to learn the mathematics of artificial intelligence. No hype, no BS, just cold hard truth. Let's get started. So this is motivated by a question if you were asked me on my video on how to learn AI for free. And I think this is a really great question and it's something I can knock out pretty quickly. So uh, the demographics of this channel are such that the majority of you are in the 18 to 44 range. And in fact, a little under half are in the 18 to 24 range, which means you're probably college age. So if you are a university student, just keep on keeping on, uh, take the recommended course sequence for whatever university you're at. I'm sure it's going to be fine. You know, it's pretty well standardized. Who am I to disagree with your university? Uh, if you are out of college and it has been some time since you have taken a math class and you need a refresher, you are just getting into AI, maybe you're a computer science guy and you you know, I have forgotten all the stuff you learned. Well, then I've got just the courseware for you. So we're going to focus on MIT Open Courseware. And the reason is that they include pretty much everything you need. They have lectures, they have notes, they have assignments. In some cases, they even have graded quizzes and exams. So naturally, this is going to provide you with all of the real time feedback you need to actually know if you're learning something. That's kind of the biggest issue with learning things online is that you don't necessarily get the feedback you get in a real class that tells you, hey, you did poorly or you did well on this and you actually understand the material. This takes care of all that for you. you if, as long as you honestly and objectively compare your solutions to the to the uh, instructor solutions, you'll be able to know whether or not you understand the material. And I want to point out something that uh, I did a video earlier on on how to learn. You should check that out if you haven't already. However, I have to contradict myself slightly here. So in this particular case, when you're learning something like fundamentals, then learning things in the kind of uh, rubric set forth by universities actually is uh, beneficial uh, because you need to have a strong foundation in the fundamentals. You, it's really hard to do just-in-time learning if you don't have a grasp on the fundamentals, right? It's almost impossible to learn to do, let's say, artificial intelligence if you don't have a strong background or at least a some familiarity with Python. So in that case, if you aren't able to do just-in-time learning, it makes perfect sense to go and fall back on a university-type learning scheme to get a solid grasp of the fundamentals. Not further ado, the course plan is pretty straightforward. You're going to have to know a few different topics. So you're going to have to know calculus, first of all. Uh, why is that important? Calculus is important because you're going to be dealing with things like, let's say, stochastic gradient descent or any of the other gradient descent variations. So those are going to be uh, uh, those to understand this fully, you're going to need to know something about calculus, right? Because gradient descent is effectively a multi-dimensional derivative uh, vector quantity that tells you the direction and magnitude of the step to take in parameter space. And you can't understand that if you don't understand differentiation. And of course, you also will need to know multivariate calculus because the you're going to need to know the chain rule as well as things like uh, vector theorems. Uh, because let's face it, everything in artificial intelligence is a really, really high dimensional space, much higher than you would deal with in any real world problem in, say, physics. Even the crazy string theorists only deal in 11 dimensions, whereas, you know, if you're dealing with a convolutional neural network, you can have, you know, millions or hundreds of millions of parameters, which is a, safe to say a pretty large parameter space. Now, of course, you're only doing numerical derivatives. You're not doing anything analytical, obviously. Uh, so it would behoove you to know something about numerical analysis as well, but that's not included here. I'm guessing that's probably included um, in part in differential equations. If not, then feel free to supplement this plan as necessary. So the first course is single variable calculus. This really lays out the fundamentals and foundations for everything. Uh, and you can see that uh, I've highlighted here, you can see that the course includes video lectures, lecture notes, exams and solutions, captions and transcripts, as well as assignments, problem sets with solutions. And that's the most important thing. You want problems and solutions. Uh, the number one determining factor in your success will be the quantity of problems you do. Uh, learning any topic on mathematics in particular, physics, chemistry, things like that, is going to be pretty analogous to weightlifting, actually. The more repetitions you do, the better you're going to get at the movement, in this case, the movement of mathematics, as well as you're going to strengthen that you know mathematical muscle in your brain, so to speak. So a, a large quantity of problems is going to be most helpful, so don't be shy about doing extra problems, as well as seeking out problem sets from other sources. So always do more than the minimum required. That's how you achieve success in life in general, and in particular in mathematics. Always do more than the minimum required. 
Uh, similarly, there is, uh, excuse me, multivariate calculus, which deals with calculus in three dimensions. You're going to learn things like, from here I can see, you're going to learn uh, spherical coordinates. That's highly useful in, say, physics. Uh, um, near topic near and dear to my heart. You can study that as well. I didn't include that. We'll get to that in a little bit, but uh, that's certainly helpful as well. Uh, but multi multivariate calculus is going to be extremely helpful. And particularly, you can see vectors and matrices. That is going to be particularly helpful when you're dealing with um, pretty much anything with a neural network. You know, it's just vector multiplication. So understanding that is going to be most helpful as well. Multiple integrals, double integrals, line integrals in the plane, triple integrals, uh, final exam, all that good stuff. And of course, you see it includes pretty much the same stuff, uh, video lectures, notes, exam solutions, transcripts, and assignments with solutions. So it's going to cover pretty much the next level of calculus, and this is a full year. So let's talk briefly here about expectations. Now, um, some people will have the will set the expectation that you can learn any complex topic in a very short amount of time, and that's simply not the case. You know, the university requires a year to do this, and you might be able to compress it down from you know the uh, uh, nine or ten month schedule down into maybe six months or so but that's really going to be if you're hustling and trying really really hard working on it every single day a few hours every day you might be able to get away with uh, with compressing the schedule a little bit but in general I would expect it to take about a year because anything worth learning is going to take about a year to learn unfortunately you know when you graduate from college and move on to get a job you'll find it takes about a year to be useful uh, six months if you're really really good or the job is a little bit easy uh, but about a year to be useful or, or good at anything next topic you want to learn is linear algebra <clears throat> Now this is kind of an extension of algebra from high school uh, where you kind of look at the more fundamental basis for algebra. You know, what are uh, spaces, how do spaces rotate into one another, matrix operations, how do matrices, matrices operate on vectors, things like that. Um, so this is going to be, uh, of course, extremely important for uh, deep learning because we're dealing with matrix operations pretty much exclusively. You know, the the algorithms that we use to solve the optimization problem are going to rely heavily on calculus, but the actual matrix operations, sorry, the actual deep learning portion is going to involve heavy use of matrix operations. And that's why we use GPUs as an aside here. The reason GPUs are so popular is because they are really, really good at vector and matrix mechanics. And the reason is that video games are, of course, uh, just 3D rotations of matrices, right? You're, you have different uh, perspectives that you have to rotate one into another and that's just a matrix operation so video cards are uniquely suited for that and so it's kind of a natural thing to use video cards for deep learning as well because deep learning is heavily reliant on matrix operations so of course it includes all the good stuff even recitation videos i don't know what that is as well as some resource indices uh another great thing uh one of the things I haven't touched on are textbooks. So uh, I do believe in getting textbooks and having physical copies on hand because there's something, I don't want to say magical, but there is something different about having a physical book on hand that you can mark in, that you can see in front of you as opposed to digital copies. Digital copies may save space. And if you're a student in space is a premium, I understand if you want a digital copy, but nothing beats having an actual physical textbook as well as the fact that you actually own it. If you rely on some other medium, uh, you know, if you have it on a hard drive, the hard drive could crash and you could lose access to it. Or if you're relying worse yet on a cloud service, they could just revoke access. Maybe they go out of business. Who knows? Maybe there's a glitch. Uh, that happens all the time. So I recommend buying the recommended textbooks as well as getting physical copies. Another thing uh, that will be incredibly important is uh, differential equations. This is uh, solving the equations set forth by calculus. So equations of motion in the case of physics, which is kind of my realm of expertise, so to speak. So I know a little bit more about that, but uh, whether or not this is strictly speaking necessary for deep learning, I'm not entirely certain. Uh, I think that if you want to go deeper into the, into the mathematics and have a really solid understanding, this would be a very important course to take, although I put this towards the bottom of the list. I included for completeness and people asked about a course of study. So I think this is important, but I would put it at the bottom of the list, least important, certainly behind calculus and linear algebra. Uh, next, uh, a course on computational thinking and data science this is going to be directly relevant to your interests. Uh, so I don't see a huge thing about their syllabus here. Let's take a look at what they have. Um, da, 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 da. 
Okay, so here we have uh, intro to optimization problems. You know, everything you deal with in deep learning is effectively an optimization problem. I don't want to say everything. I, I'm not qu uh, really qualified to speak too broadly on that, but a lot of the stuff you deal with is going to be an optimization problem. Graph theoretic models, stochastic thinking, that's useful for stochastic gradient descent, random walks, Monte Carlo simulations. Yeah, things like competence intervals, sampling and st standard error, that's all going to be really important for data science in particular, which is, which is of course, uh, closely related to machine learning and artificial intelligence. And look, they even have an intro to machine learning, clustering, classification, all that good stuff. So this will be a highly important course for you to take in your open, cor open source course study. Finally, I want to touch on something that may be neglected in many courses of study, unless you're a university student, which is a fundamental course in computer science. In this particular case, software construction. Uh, how to write software that is safe from bugs, easy to understand. That is the most important thing, uh, particularly with something as abstract as artificial intelligence. It's hard enough to understand as it is. You don't want your code to obfuscate, in other words, to uh, make not obvious the intent of the algorithm and the stuff that you're trying to do and ready for change. Of course, you're going to want to change stuff. Um, concurrent programming, concurrency, object-oriented programming, design patterns, functional programming. Functional programming isn't, uh, as of yet, a huge thing in artificial intelligence. It may become in the future. Uh, uh, I guess you could argue Lisp. I think that's a functional language that was kind of the progenitor of AI in the 60s or 70s. Um, my history is a little bit weak, sorry. Uh, but either way, this is going to be a great course for giving you a solid understanding of the fundamentals of computer science, which frankly is a little bit lacking in the, um, the the stuff I see coming out of machine learning people. I had a couple years of coursework in computer science. One of my big regrets for my undergrad career is not sticking with it. I should have double majored in physics and computer science. I would have been an unstoppable force of nature, but I, I digress. I did not. So learn from my mistakes, at least get some exposure to computer science, and you will be far ahead of the pack with respect to other data scientists who just know data science but don't know how to create good software. Another great resource is edX, which is through Berkeley. Uh, they have similar coursework. Uh, it's also free. You can get certified. If a certificate is important to you, then you can go ahead and get that. I don't know how much value that actually has, but hey, you know, if, if you want it, go ahead and get it. It's only 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Uh, and of course, they also have the uh, remainder of the uh, differentiation integration as well as uh, multivariate calculus type stuff. So it covers uh, the the exact same material as the MIT OpenCourseWare. It's just on a different platform taught through Berkeley instead of MIT. You know, which one is better? I would pick MIT, but, you know, whatever. It, it's six, one half dozen the other. It's probably just as well either way. So just know that this is a totally separate and um, cert certified uh, se sequence of courses that you can take to shore up your knowledge of mathematics. One other thing to consider, and I alluded to this earlier, is the study of physics. Now, there is a significant amount of overlap between some stuff like random walks in statistical mechanics and Monte Carlo stuff, so there, it may be worthwhile to study physics at least a little bit, this is the statistical mechanics portion. You don't need to know quantum mechanics, you don't need to know electrodynamics or classical mechanics, you don't need to know any of that stuff. If it interests you, great, study it, but it's not necessary. Uh, however, I do think statistical mechanics would be a good way to supplement your overall knowledge of artificial intelligence uh, because it deals with uh, optimizations and stuff like that. So there may be a little bit of overlap there, just kind of something to noodle on, maybe take a look at the syllabus and see if it's relevant, A, to your interests, and B, to what you think is going to be useful for an open source courseware for the mathematics of artificial intelligence. So I've rambled on about 10 minutes or so. Uh, I think this is uh, relatively succinct. Uh, course plan. I think if you can, uh, if you can take all of this, it's going to take you a couple years to get through it, working at it diligently. Uh, but that isn't to say that you have to sit there and do nothing other than take this coursework. You can do it in parallel with everything else, right? If you've already got started on deep learning, don't stop. Just you know, pick this up, uh, start learning the fundamentals of the mathematics, and as time goes on, you will have a much deeper, much greater understanding of not only the artificial intelligence side, but the mathematical side that allow you to move up from the technician to the craftsman to the pioneer level. So, and I talked about that in my video on how to achieve uh, expertise in deep learning. I hope this has been helpful. If it is, share this, comment down below, subscribe, hit that bell icon because I know only 14% of you are getting my notifications and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.